Hello everybody and welcome to your next C Sharp XNA tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be learning about screen scrolling and screen scrolling is a topic that everybody loves so I'm really sure you guys are going to enjoy this video. Uh, as for source code I'm going to be posting the source code for the last tutorial uh, for the last tutorial and the rest of the tutorials coming after I'm done the tutorials um, based on the 2D sprite effects or 2D camera effects I mean. Uh, the reason being is that uh, all of them are within the same document. They have different CS files, uh, different uh, C sharp files. So instead of uh, posting the source code of these different CS files on the website, I'm going to uh, encapsulate them and put them all inside a zip file so you guys have all the code all in one, right? Uh, so yeah, so then to so so then let's just get it right into this tutorial. So if the tutorial is already pre-written, the code is already pre-written. So if you don't, but the source code is not on the website as of yet, while you're watching this, you can pause the video and copy the source code, etc., etc. Uh, so to start off with uh the screen scrolling, this is essentially how we're gonna do screen scrolling. Uh, this, this, I don't want to scare you with this, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be kind of using uh, what they normally use in 3D space and we're going to incorporate in, in 2D space and we're going to be using matrices in order to do that. Now, I don't want that to scare you. Uh, I know the word 3D or matrix or anything can scare a lot of beginner programmers, etc, etc. Et 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 I assure you this is very, very easy. But what we're going to be doing is create a, a matrix, a view matrix that's going to actually create a translation. And what that translation is going to do is that it's going to make us able to move everything, all the game elements in our world, uh, relative to the player's position. Okay? And that's how we're going to get screen scrolling. So what we want to do is that we want to scroll the screen once the players uh, s once the player hits the center of the screen, whether in the X coordinate or the Y coordinate. Okay, so what we want to do is create a camera class, and the namespace what we'll need is the uh, basically the Microsoft XNA framework, nothing else. And uh, what we're going to do is don't forget to make it public. And what we're going to do is we need two variables: one for the camera's position and one for the uh, view matrix. Okay, a matrix called view matrix, and this is going to represent our camera's view, our viewport. So. Uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to make a property that's going to return the view ma matrix. And then we have two other properties here. Now, what this property is going to do is just return the screen width and screen height. This isn't the great greatest way to do it, but since we don't change the screen width and, and height in the initialize method, then we just have to get the default back buffer width and the default back buffer height. And uh, that will give us the screen width and the current screen width and the current screen height. Okay, as for the updates, okay, uh, in the update method, we take one thing in the parameter, that's the player's position. So our camera is just going to be affected relative to our player's position in the game world. So if the player is not, if the player hasn't set, hit the center of the screen, then we do not want to move the screen. Uh, if the player, uh, but if the player does hit the center of the screen, then we want to move the player. Well, we need to uh, f have a way to figure out if our player is at the center of the screen or not, and this is how we do it. So we take our camera's position x, and we say it's equal to player position x subtract screen width divided by 2. So if our screen width is 640, 640 divided by 2 is equal to 320. So say our player's position is equal to 310. 310 subtract 320 is equal to negative 10. And since the value is negative 10, that means our player hasn't reached uh, the center of the screen. Once the value is equal to 0 or higher, that means the player is um, at the center of the screen or farther than the center of the screen. And that means we should start scrolling our screen. Okay? Now, this isn't, uh, if you really want to be precise and scroll once the player, sent the center of the player actually hits the, the center of the screen, then you can just add in the image width divided by 2 or the center of the image and then therefore uh, that will scroll the screen once the player center hits the center of the screen. So in order for the scrolling to work, uh, we need to check for one thing. So we say if the camera's position x is less than 0, then we keep it at 0. 
And if the camera's Y position is less than zero, then we equal it to zero. Okay. So if this, if if again, if the player's X position is equal to three ten, and we do three ten subtract three twenty, that's equal to negative ten. So with that negative ten, we just keep it at zero. Okay. So now if it's zero or higher, uh, or it's higher than zero, then that's when our position's actually going to alter, and then therefore we're going to actually uh, cause a scrolling motion. So as for the part that's probably going to scare you guys, but it's really easy. Now we're going to be creating our view matrix. So we say view matrix is equal to, and we do matrix dot create translation. So the translation is going to be moving the game elements from one point to the other. So what we want to do is that we want to scroll the game elements towards the left of the screen. So if our player is moving towards the right of the screen, you want to scro uh, scroll the elements towards the left hand of the screen to make it look as though we're moving throughout the game world. So then all the game elements will be moving towards the left and therefore uh, we're going to be causing screen scrolling. Now, screen scrolling works for the player as well. So the player is indeed going to be moving to the left. But since we move the player's position uh, up, like we move the player's position towards the right of the screen, at the same time, our player is going to remain centered on the screen while all the game elements are going to move, move, be moving towards the left of the screen. Because remember, the camera's position is relative to the player's position. So think about it this way. If our player's position is equal to... Uh, uh, say uh, 320 or whatever or 330 if our player's position is equal to 330 330 subtract 320 is equal to 10 right and then therefore the player position is going to be equal to 10 so our player moved uh, say like towards the right and then it kind of moves back 10 spaces again right so therefore our player is going to be showing as though the player is centered on the screen it's not going to go off the screen and therefore it's going to look as though our, our camera is following the player but since we don't modify the camera based on the other game elements such as the background etc etc uh, then all the game elements are going to be moving towards the left and that will give us a screen scrolling animation so what we do is uh, create tra matrix or create translation we take a vector 3 so we do negative position so it will scroll to the left and for our third property our z index we just set to zero since we're only working with 2d so we have our cameras update function done uh, so what we want to do is we want to go to game1.cs now I made a texture 2d called background image you can add in any background image you want but just to I've added in a background image so you guys can see the, uh, the screen scrolling in action right and so then we make a texture 2D got background image and we uh, create an instance of our camera class. Uh, for load content, we load in our background, simple enough. And for our update, after our player's update, since our camera relies on the player's position, then we do camera.update and we put our player's position uh, in there in the parameters. So uh, what we do for our sprite batch dot draw we draw our background image before our player image so it doesn't go over our image and we set to vector to zero and the colors equal to white. So in our in our begin a sprite batch begin I believe it has five overloads. Uh, sprite batch dot begin yeah it's five overloads and there's different things you can put into there. Uh, in the fifth overload, uh, you will notice that it has a matrix dot transform matrix, a matrix transform matrix. So what we want to do is that what what our what our matrix is going to do is that we want to put in our camera's matrix there, so then it affects everything within that certain sprite batch scope. So for example, say you didn't want anything, something in the game to be affected by the camera. Then you could also make another sprite batch dot begin there and then a sprite batch dot end and it wouldn't be affected by the camera. So anything within this certain sprite batch right here is going to be uh, affected by the camera's view matrix. Okay. So what we do is that uh, for the first element we do sprite sort mode dot deferred meaning that's the default for the sprite sort mode. Uh, we set the blend state to alpha blend and you can look more into what these do later. And for the other four parameters, uh, you can add something to them if you want uh, from some special effect, uh, effects when you're drawing. But I set all these to null. And for the last parameter, we do camera.viewmatrix. So we add in our view matrix there. So when our player hits the center of the screen, uh, everything should scroll. 
so I'm going to be showing this to you right now so I have my background in there and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be moving see so nothing's happening while I'm moving once the player hits the center of the screen the background starts to scroll and same vertically as well okay so that is it for this tutorial hope you enjoyed this and uh, more camera effects are coming in the next tutorial so thanks for watching and bye